So I understand uh, that you're quite knowledgeable about any of the subject I'm going to be talking about. So I feel kind of good about that and, and relax about that. Uh, but it is a difficult situation for me when I can't see you. <laughs> and I can't see you because of the lights. Uh, I see a few people. Uh, I'm used to working very intimately because Zen is all about intimacy. It's about the contact where the division between the self and other, between the teacher and the student, drop away, those boundaries and barriers drop away, and one becomes the one with the teacher, uh, one with that uh, master. So today what I thought I'd do is start by explaining a little bit about um, Zen. We have what we call Zen koans, and maybe some of you are familiar with them. And they are like, you could say, questions or riddles that we have to resolve when we're sitting in Zen meditation. And one of them is one of my favorites, and I'm going to share it with you, and then I'm going to do some work with you. So by the end of this session, I believe you'll all be able to answer uh, this koan, which normally can take years and years and years of Zen meditation to be able to resolve, and we're going to do that in the next uh, half hour, an hour. Uh, so the koan is this, and I'll give you a little background. He was a Zen master who, his name was Zuigan. He was Chinese, lived about, oh, 1,100 years ago, 1,000 years ago. And he was the abbot of a small monastery, and he had this mountain behind his monastery. And so Zuigan was quite a radical in his day and ahead of the time, and he knew in the importance of exercise, so every day he would walk and run up this mountain uh, for his exercise. And he had a little seat on the top of the mountain that he made for himself where he would sit down to do his Zen meditation or Zazen. And he'd sit down there with a 360 degree view of the beautiful mountains. And then as he sat there in quietness, he would say, Master, are you in? And then he himself would answer, Yes, I'm in. And then he'd say, are you awake? And he himself would answer, yes, I am awake. And he said, don't be deceived by anyone, anytime, any place. No, nope, I won't. <laughs> and then he would go back down and do his teaching. This was his way of uh, reminding himself who is the master and to be awake. Because sometimes, even when we wake up, we forget who we are, and we get all caught up in our daily lives. So this was his way to step out, and I consider him one of the fathers of the big mind process. Because here, a thousand years ago, he would call out to an aspect in, in himself, which we can call the master. And he would also call out to the awakened one within himself, and he himself would confirm, he would confirm for himself, yes, I am awake, and yes, I am the master. Uh, so what I'd like to do is to do a little bit of big mind with you so that you can see through the same eyes that this Zen master Zuigan saw through. And the way I'd like to do that is... I'd like to speak to the one who is already awakened. So I'd like to speak, let me put it this way, to the awakened one that hasn't been awakened yet. Okay? So the awakened one, which is the Buddha, of course. That's what Buddha means, awakened one. The awakened one that hasn't yet been awakened. So if I may speak to the awakened one right now, and if you shift a little bit, you just physically or mentally shift, to the place where the awakened one that hasn't been awakened yet is residing at this moment in that seat, may I speak to that one, please? So, you are the awakened one that has not yet been awakened. And I know this makes no sense to you. It doesn't need to. That's 
Zen for you. Uh, so you are, just say it out loud, the awakened one that hasn't been awakened yet. Just repeat that. Okay, so really feel into this. I am the awakened one. But the self hasn't awakened to me yet. In other words, the self hasn't recognized that I'm here. Hasn't realized that I'm right here. I am the awakened one. I'm right here, sitting here in this body. But the self hasn't realized I'm here yet. So I want to ask you, what does the self do because it hasn't yet realized that you're here? And then I'm speaking to you right now. What is the self's behavior when it hasn't yet awakened to you? And anybody can just call out. I can't see you anyway, so just call out. What's the self's actions? Uh, how does the self behave when it hasn't yet realized you're here? What does it do? Okay, so this self is kind of sleeping. Not physically sleeping, but a kind of asleep. Very good. Is it searching for you, the awakened one? It is. I couldn't hear. It is. Yeah, it is. So the self is searching. So where does the self search to find you, the one who is already awake, the true self? its true nature. Where does it search? Where does it look for you? Does it look where? Outside. Outside. Okay, go further. This is very good. You're catching on. It looks outside for you. Where? In others, okay, it puts, projects it onto others, into, onto teachers, onto gurus, onto masters, uh, onto someone else. Where else does it look besides in others? Achievements. In achievements. It feels like if it achieves enough, it's going to find you, the awakened one. Where else? Books? Knowledge. Say more about that. Looks to understand? Is that what you mean? To have knowledge and understanding about you. But is that you? It feeds the mind. Right. But let me ask you, is that you? Is knowledge you, or are you just the awakened one? You see what I mean? You're the awakened one, and it looks in books... It looks to find answers. It looks to understand. It tries to grasp more knowledge, more understanding. But will that ever reach you? No. Okay, so we're clearing up some delusions here. What else does the self do because it hasn't yet awakened to your presence? Besides seeking, what else does it do? What about trying to feel fulfilled, to feel complete? What does it do to feel that? Because I think the sense is that if the self really found you, it would feel whole, complete, and perfect. So how does it try to find that? Okay, very good. In relationships with achievement, it looks for you in a relationship trying to feel that wholeness, that completeness. But will that find you necessarily? No. Okay, so tell me more. It looks in the body, it looks f to the body. Is that what you're saying? Is it going to find you in the body? No. no. What about meditation? Does it try to find you through meditation? Yes. yes. 
Is it going to find you by meditating? It's going to get closer. Very good. Excellent answer. It's going to get closer, but is it going to find you necessarily? The answer is no. It's not going to find you necessarily through meditation. Why is that? Why is it that wherever the self looks for you, outside or even within, it can't find you? Where are you hiding? How are you concealing yourself? How are you hidden? It's almost... What? I couldn't hear. There are fears. That's correct. The self is afraid. But let's go back to where are you hiding? It's almost like the very eyes that the self is looking through to find you is you. So the eyes can't see the eyes. In other words, are you and the self really separate? No. So when it looks for you, it's looking for an illusion. It's looking for a projection of you, but it's not finding you. Let's try this. Let's try awakening you. Now, I said that very poorly. We can't try to awaken you. That's the problem. Whenever we try to awaken you, the trying itself fails. How about if we just speak to the awakened one that is now awakened? Let's just try that. So let me speak to the awakened one already awakened now, who has been realized and awakened. So you are, and just repeat, I am the awakened one Awakened. Okay, now just sit and see what the difference is as the awakened one that's now awakened. And just feel what that's like. And see if there's any shift or change or if it's exactly the same. There's no right or wrong answer to this. You are the awakened one that's now awakened, and I'm speaking to you. Tell me what it's like to know that I am the awakened one, and I have now been awakened. Peaceful. Isn't it very peaceful? There's a calm, there's a peace. Anybody else? Focused. Focused. Absolutely. There's a focus, there's a, an energy that is very present. Anyone else? Powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Relaxed. And very relaxed. There's a release. There, is, there is a release. Can you say more about that? What's released? The tension. What about the seeking? It's gone. Am I right? It's harmony. It is harmony. Correct. The way I see it is different. Tell me about that. The way I see is different. Yeah, it's, it's better. It is, isn't it? It's much, much more big. In fact, in fact, can you find an end or a beginning to you? No. Now, from this place of the awakened one who is now awakened, let's look over at the self that I began to talk to a few minutes ago. And what do you see when you look at the self from this place of being the awakened one now awakened? What do you see? Can you find the self? I don't know what it is. 
I mean, if you can't find them. That, that's right. You don't need the self. It's a habit, okay? Look at the difference now and before. What is different? Yes. Fresh air, wider, open. Anybody else? What, what do you sense is the difference? There is a difference. Yes. Say more about the connection. That's absolutely right. There is this connection or oneness to everything and everyone. We call it the interconnection of all things. Anybody else? What do you see? What do you feel? What do you sense is different? Energy, Energy is different. Tell me about that. <laughs> yes, more powerful and probably a greater energy, a release of energy. Okay. <laughs> it's just available. Isn't that interesting? Anything else? I'm going to change the name now and see how it feels. Let me speak to the true self. The true self. You are. Just repeat. The true self that now hasn't been also awakened. The true self that also hasn't been awakened. So I am the true self, but I too haven't been realized yet. We're going back. So how do you manifest in the self as the true self that hasn't been yet awakened? Short one, incomplete. incomplete. Like something's missing. That's right. Absolutely perfect. So you manifest in the self as if something's missing, something is incomplete. And then the self is looking for you. Completeness, fulfillment, peace, the true self. Where does it look? Same places as it was looking for the awakened one? Yes. Probably, huh? In others, in books, in teachings, in understanding, like in, gold. in gold? Gold. gold, goals, goals, okay. Achievements. Achievements, absolutely. What would it look like? if you were realized and awakened as the true self. Would it look much like when the awakened one was awakened? I would say yes, too. So let's awaken you. Let me speak to the true self now, completely awakened, completely realized. You are the true self, completely awakened, completely realized. And now let's sit with this voice. So you are the true self, completely awakened, realized. 
and see what this is like that you have been realized and awakened to. Then tell me what it's like. Breathing yeah, a deep breathing. Breathing very deeply. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody else? Grounded to the floor. Okay. Oh, flow. Okay. Okay, more stable. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We have over here the self that we began to talk to, and we have the true self and the awakened one over here. Let's come back and speak to the self over here. The self that we began to talk to, what we would call our everyday self. Tell me about you now, that you know where the true self is, and you know the awakened self, where it is. What changes for you? You are the self. What changes? What's different? Yes, I'm inside, I'm not outside. So what changes for you now as far as searching or seeking? I know where to look. Okay, I know where to look. That helps, huh? <laughs> it's like the old story goes, you, you lost your car keys coming home from a party where maybe you had drank too much and... Uh, you're pretty sure you left it outside, but it's dark outside, so you look where the light is inside. Now you know at least where to look. Get a flashlight. So what's different? There must be some difference. It was a little difficult for me to hear you. Okay. Okay. So I can feel now that this is an illusion and just playing with words. What does that do for you to know that you're kind of an illusion? <laughs> okay. That's right. It's not only you, it's all illusion, huh? A little bit. And funny. It also, I think, allows you to to relax a little bit and not take things quite so seriously since it's an illusion. Okay, we're going to now make a big move. I'm creating a triangle, and that triangle is your life. And we've talked to one corner of the triangle, that's you, the self. We've talked to the other, that's the true self or the awakened one. I want to now speak to the apex of the triangle the point that embraces both the self and the true self, the awakened one, embraces both but transcends both. Okay? And I'm going to call it just the apex. Okay? The top of the triangle, the apex. So would you allow me to speak to the apex, please? The one that embraces both the self and the true self. The primary self and the true self. You are the... Just say apex. Okay, I'm the apex. And now, just be with that for a moment. Just sit with that. And see that within you is both the, we could say, uh, small self or the uh, contracted self, the everyday life self, and also the true self. The one that has 
no boundaries, no parameters, is relaxed and at peace. And you embrace, you incorporate both, and you're free to play, free to move from one to the other without hindrance. You can move back and forth knowing it's really one thing, one mind, one self, for two different aspects. And I'm going to give you a name now. You are the final authority, the master. The final authority, you are the master, like Swigon's master. So just be with this. You are the awakened one. You are the final authority. You are the master. Master, are you in? Are you awake? Don't be deceived by anyone, any time, any place. So you all passed the koan that answered. <laughs>